Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Hello, Hello good evening, teacher. Good How evening, are you? Everybody. How was your day? How was your day? Everything okay? My my day was very, very busy in the hospital. Oh, okay. And why a lot of uh, patients, emergencies? A lot of emergency, uh, pregnant, vomiting, fever. Mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. a, a little uh, busy because um, in six hours, um, we have uh, about 16, 16 patients. Wow. 60 patients. Yes, yes. Okay. A lot of people, huh? A lot of people. Yes, a lot of people. Mm. And in which hospital do you work, Patty? I am working in the hospital of the Seguro Social in Zacatecoluca, La Paz. In Zacatecoluca, okay. Yes. Ah, it's a lot because is Zacatecoluca is, is not a metropolitan mm -hmm. area, so it's a lot of people for emergency. Yes, but but today the pregnancy was uh, <laughs> crowded. <laughs> okay. A lot of people have wanted to have babies today, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So I imagine, I imagine today a lot of babies crying. Yes, a lot of babies. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, I'm so glad that you are here today. Thank you so much for being here on time and being present. This is the important. We are going to begin because it's time for us to begin. If the people come late, it's okay. It's for them. Um, today, we're going to continue in unit one, and we're going to see a couple of new things. Yesterday, we saw infinitive in gerunds. Remember, the infinitive is the verb with two. Gerund is the verb with ing. What is the difference? Is not the verb, is the word before. So the word before is the one that determines. So as an example, when you have the word can stand, right? Is I can stand, it has to be an ing. I can stand listening to reggaeton. I can stand, ah, playing soccer, I, this is different. I avoid, I avoid always the verb is going to be ing. I avoid studying late. I avoid drinking coffee at night. These are certain verbs. The more you practice, the easier it's going to be. But the idea for gerund infinitive is for the structure for the word before. Today, we're going to go ahead and continue practicing a little bit but also seeing more information. Today, we're going to be taking a look at 1.3. Um, let's see. Dennis, can you please read 1.3? Sure. Um, all right. Lesson objective. At the end of this section, participants will be able to talk about people have changed and practice using the vocabulary. Okay, good. How people, how people have changed. So today we're going to be looking at that. The idea of looking at how you changed, okay? Here we use some expressions. The expression I used to be. Mm, the expression I used to be is before is this and now is different. If you say I used to be fat is before fat and now yo, now no. If you say, I used to be healthy, is before healthy and now not healthy. This is the idea, is also the same for the negative. I didn't used to be healthy. This means that before I was not healthy and now I am. The same, we have other expressions. When we use I'm more, this is the idea that before you not as much, but now yes. So we're going to watch a small video to see how we can use these different expressions to describe how we have changed or other people. 
Welcome. You know, most people change over the years. How have you changed, let's say, over the last five years? What do you want to change now? Complete the following chart. How have you changed? Describing how you've changed. I used to be, but now I'm, I'm more, now I enjoy. Describing how would you like to change? I'm interested in, I'd like to be more. Three things I've changed, three things I would like to change. Okay. So right now with our partners, that's the first thing that we're going to begin with. Just a simple conversation. We're going to talk about three things that you've changed and three things that you'd like to change. As an example, oh, I used to be skinnier. Now I've gotten healthier. Okay. I used to go to the gym. Now I only like to eat food. This is how I used to change. And now also the idea. And how, what would I like to change? Oh, well, the same thing. I'd like, this is the expression, I would. I would like in the contraction is I'd like. I'd like to learn another language. Okay. I'd like, I'd like to learn how to dance uh, flamenco. Okay. Why not? So the same thing with you and your partner. Three things, how you have changed. And three things, what you would like to change. So three in the past and then three for the future. It's okay. Any questions? Any vocabulary or words you don't know how to say? Mm, it's okay. I don't have question. Okay. Okay. No question. Perfect. Let's just, uh, let's go. Listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. Carlos Angel. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, and but you didn't join the group. Yes, I just did it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, joined the the sorry the meeting. I don't know. Can you explain a little bit more what you're seeing there? Uh, sorry, you're Angel. You're in during groups. You are supposed to join the group. You have to accept the invitation to the oh, group. Sorry, sorry about. Your partner is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have the invitation? Okay. Carlos, you okay? <clears throat> Listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. 1. Marcos Well, I guess the biggest change in my life over the last five years is that I got married. You know, I used to be into going out with friends every weekend and staying out late. We were pretty wild and crazy back then. Now, I'm more of a family man. I don't mind staying at home, watching TV, that kind of thing. I'm even learning to cook. It's not so bad. I guess you could say that I started to grow up. I was. Hey, Carlos, are you back? You had problems with your internet? Yes, I don't know what happened. Uh, always you, when you open the, a group, uh, I don't know why the, the system is only connecting, connecting. I don't know why I... I I don't know why I don't enter in any group. Uh, it's difficult. Sometimes it's for the internet. But don't Maybe. worry. At this moment, the groups are going to finish. Um, okay, and then no we're problem. going to come back. Mm -hmm. I will hear no problem. Thank you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. Okay. Here we have the other people. So, Carlos, tell me, how have you changed? Well, uh, change uh, that I would like to, to change in my life. Okay, go ahead, Carlos. Well, uh, I like to to drive drive a drive, drive a, a motorcycle. I don't know or, or driving. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to to play to to to, to travel uh, to Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to to lose weight this year. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Now, pretty good, Carlos. Nice ideas. They are they are not correct. Not one sentence was correct, but very good ideas. Now, why is not correct? It's not correct because you said the expression "I like to." I like to is not correct. The correct pronunciation is with D, I'd like to. They are two different meanings. I like to is mm -hmm. to do. For example, I like to eat pizza. I like to drink is now. I'd like to is for my intentions in the future. I'd like to go to Europe. No, I, I go to Europe now. This is why, okay? Okay. And the, the second is for your grammar. In the grammar is not correct to use the verb in the past tense. No, I'd like to lost weight. The correct is I'd like to use weight. Always the verb in present. Very good, Carlos. It's excellent because with that, the other partners also learn how to pronounce correctly. Everybody remember, it's different. I'd like to and I like to. Okay? Great. <laughs> Carlos, Thank select you. another person, please. Uh, Ana Granados. Okay, Ana Granados. Tell us, Ana. Hi there. Um, well, I guess I'd like to lose weight too. And I'd like to learn how to dance salsa. And I'd like to learn how to speak French. Okay, good, Ana, pretty good. Only try to emphasize your D stronger. Remember, make exaggerate your final sound, that I'd. This is the idea for making sure that it's clear that it's an imaginary situation. Okay, okay, thank you. Good, Anna, select the next person. Eric. Eric, okay. And let me see, do we have an Eric? There is no Eric here, Anna. Anna, we don't have an Eric. I thought I was with him yesterday. Okay, um, then Selena. Okay, Selena. Okay, uh, hi, hi there. Hi. Uh, I used to be asleep, but I would like to be energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to be read one book. Uh, and I would like to read more. And the other one, I used to be um, eat so much and I would like to eat less, I think. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that I have. Okay, very nice. Now, thank you very much. Um, Selena, you have several mistakes and the mistakes are for the vocabulary. The same, okay. the same as Carlos in the chat for everybody, when you make the mistakes, if you look in the chat, you can see how to correct your mistakes. For okay. example, Selena, you said, I like to, I like to, uh, I, before I, I used I to. I go lie. I used to. I used, I to, used to be. Uh -huh. No, I used to be sleep because sleep is a verb. And B, oh, okay. the description. I used to be sleepy, right? Sleepy. 
Correct. Sleepy. Correct. Okay. Or I used to sleep, but no verb to be. The same okay. as the others. Is not correct. I used to be read. Only I okay. used to read. Okay. I used to be Excellent. read. Okay. Not correct. I used to be eat. I used to eat. Okay. What is the correct, Selena? Yeah, I got it. No, no, but say it, Selena. No, I got it. You ah, need to okay, pronounce it. Yes. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I you I you I used to be sleepy. No. Ya ve, por eso no se dice I got it porque no lo estás haciendo correcto. Right? Okay. Uh -huh. It's no I got it. Okay. Always repeat and Celine is in the chat. In the chat in the group, you can see. You don't okay. have to Okay, I can see. Okay. I can see. Good. Now, it's very good. Now say the three yeah, sentences no. again. Go. Oh, um, I use, I use to be sleep. Sleepy. A sleepy. Good. The next okay. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. One. Okay. And I used to be just, just say reading. No. Read, read. Exactly. Uh, I use. Be. Uh -huh. I used to to read. Correct. I used to read. Okay. Okay. And I used to to eat. Uh huh. I used to to be eat uh, so much. I used to eat so much. Correct. No be. So, Selena, mm -hmm. you you put the verb be extra. Yeah. You need to yeah. listen, not yeah, to put yeah. the verb be extra. Yeah. Well, good job, Selena. Thank you so much. Okay. Next, thank you. You're welcome. The next time you do it better. Select the next person, Selena. Yeah. Who is the next person? One more. One more. Oh, Rafael and, Dabu. Rafael Dabu. Okay. Go ahead, Rafael. Your decision. But how yes. how have you changed? I or... like to race cars. Okay. <laughs> Continue, Rafael. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I like to pilot a helicopter. Mm -hmm. And I I like to to travel for the for all the world. Okay. Thank you, Rafa. Very nice. Carlos, is Rafael sentences correct or not correct? I think that is correct. Uh, for example, yeah. I like I like to travel to uh, to the world. Okay. Good. Very good that you have the idea, Carlos. But Rafael, you need to pronounce stronger. I'd no, I like to race cars. I'd like to I'd. race cars. Okay. I'd, I'd. like to. Mm -hmm. This is I'd. the idea. Mm -hmm. I'd like. Correct. I'd like. The D I'd is like. If it's difficult to pronounce the D, it's okay. I would like to. The two are correct. I would like to. Okay. Correct. This is the, but is necessary the D. Okay. Thank Excellent. you. All right, guys. So as an example, when we practice, the my objective is to correct you. Don't worry. The mistakes is normal. Everybody makes mistakes. It's not bad to make mistakes. That is my job. My job is to help you to stop the mistake. And then the next time you correct. So don't worry. Always if I can have the opportunity, I will put in the chat so that you can see your mistakes and write it down later, or that way you can practice, okay? All right. In this okay. moment, Patricia wanted to say something. Go ahead, Patricia. I only want to say, oh, okay. <laughs> but I have uh, some sentences. Great. I used 
to do the laundry, but now pa I don't. Patricia, Patricia, look at the yes. camera. Look at the camera when you speak. Is remember the class is a speaking class, no a reading class. So look at the camera and speak. Oh, okay, okay. I used to do the laundry because, uh, but now I don't mm -hmm. because my husband uh, uh, is doing it. Mm -hmm. Continue, uh, continue. Uh, the other it was. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I I used to to make uh, some painting, but now I uh, I sorry, but now I I don't have any time. Mm -hmm. Um. The <laughs> no, no reading, Patricia. No reading. You don't improve the speaking with reading. When you go with an American, a Canadian, the other, no, one moment, let me read. No, speak, speak. Don't worry, Patricia. Okay. Don't worry. You do the best. I help you. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I would like to, to do more exercise, but I can't. Very good, Patricia. The last sentence was perfect and correct. The sentence number one and two were not correct. In the chat, okay. you can see the correct. Is not correct. My husband is the laundry. My husband does the laundry is the correct. My husband does. What is the correct, Patricia? My husband does the laundry. Correct. Is not correct. I used to do some painting. Is correct. I used to paint. Ah, okay. I used to paint. Excellent. You see, Patricia, not necessary to read. You speak very good. That is the idea. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Patricia. Now we're going to practice listening. What are we going to practice? Listening. Listening. I need you to listen and identify how the people have changed what activities the different people have done. This is exercise 1.5 in the platform, but we are going to listen together, okay? Okay. Okay, let's listen together, 1.5 in the platform. Listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. One. Okay. What are the names of the two people? Marcos, Marcos and, Heather. and Heather. Correct. So you and need Heather. to identify what does Marcos do and what does Heather do. You need to identify each one separate. Marcos. Well, I guess the biggest change in my life over the last five years is that I got married. You know, I used to be into going out with friends every weekend and staying out late. We were pretty wild and crazy back then. Now, I'm more of a family man. I don't mind staying at home, watching TV, that kind of thing. I'm even learning to cook. It's not so bad. I guess you could say that I started to grow up. I wasn't so interested in going out all the time. I was ready to settle down and have a family. I have to be honest, my heart wasn't really in the right place before. I mean, before I didn't mind being, well, a little irresponsible at times, even selfish. I was always out having fun with my friends, but I never wanted to hear about their problems. I just didn't care. But with my wife and little boy, it's different. I'm trying to become more, you know, more kind and generous. I want to be there to help them out, no matter how small the problem. Two, Heather. I have to say, five years ago, I was a completely different person. I never said much in a crowd, and I always tried to avoid making small talk with people I didn't know very well. But really, I was just incredibly shy and reserved. Anyway, then I went away to college, and I had this roommate, Nora. 
She had a great sense of humor and laughed at all my jokes. That really gave me a lot of confidence. Nora and I joined a small study group at school. When we finish studying, a bunch of us go out for coffee. Conversation is easy because we all have a lot of the same interests. Now, my new friends think of me as the funny one in the group. Can you believe it? So, I'd say I'm much more friendly and outgoing now. I don't worry about speaking up and giving my opinion anymore. In fact, I'm thinking about joining a few more clubs so I can meet even more new people and do more things. <clears throat> Great. Now we're going to have our partners and we are going to explain. One partner explained the man, the other partner explained the woman, what you understood. Okay. It's okay or listen one more time. Listen one more time, please. Okay, let's listen one more time. Let's try one more. Here we go. Listen again. Which person do you think would be more likely to do these things this weekend? Check Marcos or Heather. <clears throat> One, Marcos. Well, I guess the biggest change in my life over the last five years is that I got married. You know, I used to be into going out with friends every weekend and staying out late. We were pretty wild and crazy back then. Now, I'm more of a family man. I don't mind staying at home, watching TV, that kind of thing. I'm even learning to cook. It's not so bad. I guess you could say that I started to grow up. I wasn't so interested in going out all the time. I was ready to settle down and have a family. I have to be honest, my heart wasn't really in the right place before. I mean, before I didn't mind being, well, a little irresponsible at times, even selfish. I was always out having fun with my friends, but I never wanted to hear about their problems. I just didn't care. But with my wife and little boy, it's different. I'm trying to become more, you know, more kind and generous. I want to be there to help them out, no matter how small the problem. Two, Heather. I have to say, five years ago, I was a completely different person. I never said much in a crowd, and I always tried to avoid making small talk with people I didn't know very well. But really, I was just incredibly shy and reserved. Anyway, then I went away to college, and I had this roommate, Nora. She had a great sense of humor and laughed at all my jokes. That really gave me a lot of confidence. Nora and I joined a small study group at school. When we finish studying, a bunch of us go out for coffee. Conversation is easy because we all have a lot of the same interests. Now, my new friends think of me as the funny one in the group. Can you believe it? So, I'd say I'm much more friendly and outgoing now. I don't worry about speaking up and giving my opinion anymore. In fact, I'm thinking about joining a few more clubs so I can meet even more new people and do more things. Great. Now, we have... One more time with our partner. I explain the man, my partner, the woman, or I explain the woman, my partner, the man, or we try to together. But the idea is explain what you understand with your partner. Yes. Okay, teacher. All right, let's do it. Hey, hi, teacher. Hello. Did you send me to the group? Yes, I didn't. Um, no, just come back here with you. Okay, we'll send you to another group again. Let's try. Okay, thank you. Of course, got him.
Okay, great. Let's listen from someone else. Okay, are we ready? Okay. So we have two people, correct? What did we understand? We had Marcos. What did you understand about Marcos? Oh, wow. Wow, well, he's, he's que motivados. Okay, all right. Amazing, amazing, okay. excellent. All right, let's try Evelyn. Think Marine, Evelyn, okay. Seron, go. <laughs> Okay, what I remember about Marcus is that he used to uh, be irresponsible, but now he's a family man. And, and now uh, he is into cooking. Uh, also, uh, he also mentioned that uh, he uh, enjoyed going out with his friends on weekends, but now he stays at home and uh, and watch tv i would guess uh about heather um in uh she used to be uh shy but now uh, she uh, uh since she entered university he she joined uh, a small uh, study group and now he she is more uh sociable okay very nice well I want to say that very nice. I love, I love your pronunciation. It's very nice pronunciation, but it's not the correct ones. For example, in the chat, you said that he stay at home. Please remember that for he, she, and it is always an obligation to use an S for the routine. He stays at home. You say he watch TV, good idea, but he watches TV. Always is necessary to use for the routines is the S, but is excellent comprehension in listening. Only careful with the final sounds, Evelyn. Very nice. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. All right. Let's take a look. Who's next? Who's next? My next volunteer, Nicole. All right. Go, Nicole. Hello. Well, I understood that Marco. No, 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 Marco. No. Now, Heather, tell us about Heather. Okay, Heather, mm -hmm. right. Okay, I understood that Heather used to be really shy, but now that she started college, she's really outgoing and friendly. Only that? <laughs> yeah. One sentence. All right, thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very nice. Ana Granados, let's try one. Tell me what else, what else did you understand, Ana? Um, about Marcus or Heather? No, about Heather. About Heather. Heather? Okay. She said she avoided making small talk and she used to be very reserved. And she met a friend, Nora, I think she said, and she gave her the confidence uh, to like get to know other people. And now she's considered the funny one in the group. Okay, thank you for that extra information. Very nice, great job. As you can see, we all listen to the same thing, but some of us, we remember different vocabulary. It's great, some of the vocabulary that you learn. Outgoing, shy, reserved, stay at home. All of those are excellent. Now let's try together to answer the questions. Who is the person that likes to stay out at big parties, okay? Who would be this be? Would this be Marcos or Heather? Marcos. Heather. Marcos. 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 Mm -hmm. Some say Marcos, some say Heather. Now, remember, this is not in the past. Here is in- If it is, weekend. it will be for, for this weekend, it will be- For this weekend. We'll so say how, Heather. How, how are they oh. now? So, okay, Heather. Oh, Heather. Okay, who would like to stay? Who is probably stay home and watch TV? Mm. That was Marcos. Marcos. That's Marcos. Marcos. Okay. Who would help a relative with a personal problem? Marcos. Uh, Marcos. 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 Oh, okay. Who would invite a classmate to a funny movie? Heather. 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 Okay. Very nice. As you can see, all of your answers are correct. Heather is the one who now goes to big parties. 
Marcos stays home, watches TV, and Marcos is a family man. And he helps people with a personal problem. And then, of course, Heather is now very funny. She likes to do because of her friend that she met, Nora. Okay. Any questions? Any vocabulary or words you're not sure about? Mm -hmm. no? In the listening, we heard the word outgoing. What was outgoing? In Spanish, is a. Uh, no, Patricia, no in Spanish, but thank you. Try in English. Someone that is social. That is. Um, okay, good way. Any. Patricia, do you know another way to explain outgoing, but very good, very good. Uh -huh. um, something outgoing is a, a, hmm, extroverted. A good, friendly, very nice, good. Extrovert. Friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, they like the parties, the conversation, the communication, chatting, etc. Very good. Now, what Dennis and Patricia demonstrated is our technique to improve our English. They demonstrated the correct technique. The correct technique is not to use Spanish. The correct technique is to explain, to give examples, to give demonstrations, or use other words like a synonym. Outgoing, synonym, extrovert. Outgoing, makes friends easily. Outgoing, examples. And also, you can also use outgoing, you can use the antonym as an example. Outgoing, the person, the opposite of the person that is shy, the opposite of the person that doesn't like to do things with others. These are all of the techniques that we want to use in our class and with our partners when speaking to not use Spanish. You are advanced. Advanced, advanced is not necessary Spanish. And the idea is help your partner. I say, hey, Javier, no Spanish partner, right? Because the idea is to make Javier speak in English because he is advanced. If I say I am advanced Russian, I am advanced Japanese, you don't imagine I speak Spanish when speaking Japanese. The same for English. So we are going to try, even if it's slow, we're going to try always, always in English. Yes? Yes. Excellent, you guys are amazing. All right, now we're going to join with our partners. With our partners, we are going to practice our third person and we are going to describe our friends, okay? As an example, tell me about a good friend, a best friend, many friends, whatever you like, he or she. He is funny, she is tall, I met her. Tell us a little story about your best friend. So. As an example, I asked my partner, Nicole is my partner. Nicole, tell me about your best friend. Okay, my best friend's name is Catherine. Um, she is really extroverted. Um, she really likes going to parties. Um, she really likes the beach as well. Um, she is tall. She also is 21 years old, uh, same as me. Uh, um, she also loves cooking. Yeah. Okay, good. Very nice. Now, Nicole is a great way to begin. Now, my job, my job as the Nicole's partner is to get more information, more information. For example, I don't know. What does Nicole do? What is her job? What is her profession? My partner, Nicole, didn't say about her best friend. Nicole, what does your best friend do? Mm, my best friend is studying and engineering. Oh, wow. Where And where is your best friend studying? At University Jose Simeon Cañas. Great. And how did you meet your best friend? I met her at school. This is the idea. The idea is now you see my partner, I let my partner speak, speak, speak. And then I ask follow-up questions. Follow-up questions is like for the communication. 
is more information. It's okay? Okay. So, so or one more example, it's okay. Okay, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. All right. No questions, right? No questions. No, teacher. Excellent. Right. So remember, we're going to ask our partners to tell us about their best friend. Okay, let's do it. And then if your partner finished, you ask more questions. Focus when listening. When listening and speaking, remember to pronounce the S if it's routines or the D in the past tense, if you are describing the past actions. Hi, please read the following article. Can you find the noun clause in the last example? I'll give you 30 seconds to read it and identify it. You may begin. Did you find it? Let's do it together. There is only one bathroom. Noun clauses have to be. Remember, a noun clause is a group of words that function together as a noun. It can be the subject of a sentence or the object of a verb. We want you to pay attention on. The word that signals the beginning of a noun clause. That in noun clauses after be is optional. Also notice the prepositions that are used with the following noun. Let's work on an example. One benefit of being an only child is that you get a lot of attention. That you get a lot of attention is a noun clause. Every noun clause has a subject and a predicate. In the above example, you is the subject and get is the verb. Complete the sentences with your own ideas. Then, compare them with a partner in class. Number one, an advantage of being a twin. Number two, a problem with being an only child. And we're back. Excellent. And we're back. Who is the first that would like to tell us about their partner's best friend? Well, we're stopping in the middle with Dennis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nelson, tell me about Dennis. Go ahead. And his best friend. He was actually just telling me that he has lost contact with them since now he has a family. 
uh, that's when we get cut off basically oh. so at the beginning of the conversation he was more most of the time it was me talking about my best friend and when he was his turn then i only got that part yeah but but i think that that i made provide you like a, a brief description about nelson's friend so he was telling me that he's like between he that nelson doesn't know what his friend uh, age is and um he was telling me that he's between 30 and 35 years old his friend he they they know each other they met each other um at a call center like six years ago um let's see he mentioned that uh, his friend likes parties a lot but uh but it was before his friend uh, got a girlfriend. But now that he has a girlfriend, uh, he doesn't do it uh, too much like he used to do it. So he still likes party. He likes to drink. I guess that's some beers. <laughs> and <clears throat> let's see, he still goes to the party, but not that much like he used to do it. Um, let's see what else. He says that it's very funny. Um, and also when they are in a party or they are taking some time together, they get a lot of fun. So yeah, pretty much oh. that, that was the description. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, very nice. I think you did a very good time, a very good idea. Um, a little bit of vocabulary that you need to improve. It's in the chat, of course. Um, just a few small mistakes. Uh, you said at the beginning, we get cut off. No, we get cut off. We get is in the present. Remember, we got cut off. Good. I, Nelson, your pronunciation is the 30 is, you have to take out your tongue. The tongue comes out for the correct pronunciation. The pronunciation is 30, 30. What is it, Nelson? Well, I wasn't the one providing the description. That was Dennis, but... Uh, oh, that was Dennis. Sorry, sorry. I thought yeah. that Dennis was talking about... Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was you, Nelson. Uh, Dennis, go but, ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'll take it. 30. <laughs> I will take that. 30. 30. Go ahead, Dennis. 30. 30. 30. 30. Uh -huh, but you were... Nelson, but you were the one speaking right now, yes? I'm the one speaking right now. Yes, yeah. yes. So you, you're the one who said uh, the friend likes party. No, ac actually Nelson was the first one that was speaking. Uh, he just mentioned that that we got cut off. Right. That's exactly right. Oh, uh, and after that, we, that, get, we get cut off, that's me. That, okay. I, I, I got that, that we got cut off. It's, no it's problem. Cut off. Okay, then it's we good. Got cut off. So remember, no likes party, likes to party. Auxiliary, that you need the preposition too likes to party okay likes to party good and taking some time is not correct this is spending some time spending some time correct okay. mm -hmm. nice excellent all right very nice great who else would like to share about their partner's best friend may i of course Thank you, Javier, for volunteering and not being scared. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little, a little bit shy, but that's have to stop. Uh, to be honest, uh, my partner was Patricia, and but um, me and her just talk about uh, her friend, and she told me that her best friend is Guadalupe. She's 34, 38 years old. And uh, she told me she, uh, she was dark skinned. So I tell her, you have to say brown skin. It, it sounds better, I think. I think so. Uh, I don't know. Uh, another information. Uh, she told me they uh, both lives 
in the same uh, in the same town and he, she's younger than her younger than patricia is that it javier yeah, yeah yes. that's it hey very nice javier great job correct the correct usage for comparative the correct usage only javier we have to get a little bit better in fluency but yeah, very I nice know. structure no problem thank you so much for sharing excellent we have time for one more if we have one more volunteer anybody that would like to improve their english please speak if you do not want to improve your english please stay quiet Okay, then let's continue to our next activity. I understand in this moment, we don't want to improve our English. It's okay. Some days we feel confident. Some days, I know, some days only you want to listen. No problem. In this moment, we are going to learn a little bit about our grammar for today. In today's grammar, we are going to use noun clauses. Noun clauses is a grammar that is to give extra information. That's it. The function is we give more information. Here we're going to watch a small video about noun clauses. Hi, please read the following. There is only one bathroom. Noun clauses of the week. Remember, a noun clause is a group of words that function together as a noun. It can be the subject of a sentence or the object of a verb. We want you to pay attention on the word that signals the beginning of a noun clause. That in noun clauses after be is optional. Also notice the prepositions that are used with the following noun. Let's work on an example. One benefit of being an only child is that you get a lot of attention. So, as you can see, the noun clause is extra information about this. So, the sentence, one benefit of being an only child. This is not enough information. We need the extra information. How do we use the extra information? Well, we use an expression, a complete sentence, like that you get a lot of attention. This is going to make it so that we have a better idea of what we're talking about. Let's look at the examples we had from before. Here. Oh, normally this is the structure. You give your opinion. What is your opinion? An advantage, a disadvantage, a good thing, a bad thing, the best thing, a problem, any opinion. Then you talk about the topic. Oh, an advantage of living in El Salvador. What? Then you give the extra information using the word, the verb to be, is, and normally, but not obligation, use the word that. So, as an example, an advantage of having an older brother is that you always have someone to help you. The same structure for anything. The advantage of living in San, San Salvador. The advantage of living in El Salvador. The advantage of speaking another language. And then you give the extra information that. Is okay the idea for noun clauses? Yes, it is. Oh, just a quick question. Of course, Dennis. But yeah, I, I got the idea that it's, it's good that we use that after is, so to provide the extra information, but it's incorrect if I do only use is. So for example, the having an older brother is, you always have someone to help you. So in that way is incorrect. No, Dennis, it is correct. That is not an obligation. It is okay. normal, but not a grammatically obligation. Okay. Mm -hmm. But very good question. Thank you, Dennis. You're welcome. Let's work on an example. One benefit of being an only child is that you get a lot of attention. That you get a lot of attention is a noun clause. Every noun clause has a subject and a predicate. In the above example, you is the subject, and get is the verb. Complete the sentences with your own ideas. Then, compare them with a partner in class. 
Number one, an advantage of being a twin. Number two, a problem with being an only child. So, why did we learn about nine clauses? Because we want to express your opinion. For example, um, Patricia works. And at the beginning of the class, I learned that Patricia works in a hospital. And Patricia was trying to express a good day or a bad day. And how was her day? This is the function of the noun clause. Patricia said, oh, I, what happened today? Ah, oh, ah. Uh, a problem with being a doctor is that I have a lot of patients today. Oh, this give me the information about her opinion. Or, for example, for me, the great thing about being a teacher is that I can help people improve their English. The idea of the noun clause is to give your opinion about any topic, your job, your life, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your boss, your country, your, is your opinion. It's only the way to learn to give a better, more details about the different things. In this moment, I would like you to tell me what is the good thing or the bad thing about being married. Some of you are married, some of you are single. What is good, what is bad, in your opinion? Because Valentine's Day is next week, and I'd like to hear you use the correct structure. Okay. When you finish your sentence fluency and correctly, then you can go. If you do not finish your sentence fluency and correctly, it's okay. I give you my time for free, and I help you, and we stay connected. Any volunteers? I would like. Oh, a lot of people want to improve their English now. It's amazing. Very nice improving their English. Thank you, Dennis. Please go. Okay, okay. Um, okay, let, 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 me, let me think about it. Maybe Dennis is not prepared. Would someone else like to participate? Yes, me. <laughs> Okay, Dennis, lose your turn. Go. <laughs> okay. The best part to be single is that you can enjoy old parties in Valentine's days. Okay. Very good, Karen. The grammar is the best part of being single, not the best part to be single. The grammar being... correctly, the best part of being single. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for doing it. Very correct. Karen, before you leave, for everyone, Tomorrow, you have a one-minute presentation, one-minute presentation where you have to speak about a friend, not your best friend, any friend, but you have to give, you have to investigate vocabulary, adjectives, descriptions, professions, uh, history. It, my friend, you have to use today's grammar. He, she used to... Ta, ta, ta. They are going to, they would like to. You have to tell me their dreams. You are going to speak for how long, Javier? How long is the presentation? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I didn't pay attention. Ah, thank you for asking the question, Javier. Good. Neko, how long does do we have to do the presentation for? For one minute. Thank you. Javier, how long? One minute. For Ooh. one minute. Thank you, Nicole. Now, Javier, pay attention to you. You see, not pay attention to, ah, uh, but you are a woman. So, Javier, quickly listen. Uh huh. All right. Thank you so much. Karen, remember, prepare. I think Angel is the next volunteer. I see Angel has his hand. Go ahead, Angel. Tell us. Okay, thank you. I'm going to start. The best part of being married is that every single morning we share time with the people, the person we love. Oh, that's so sweet. Your wife is <laughs> listening, correct? Your wife is listening. Uh, no, that, I'm that single, is, but... Uh -huh. I'm your wife, just your you wife with the sandal, la chancleta. Ah, <laughs> Angel, I listening, I listening. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Good. All right. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Karen. You can stay or you can go. 
All right, Evelyn, go. Okay, bye. Okay. Uh, the best, uh, the best thing of being single is that I have more time for myself. <laughs> Very good, correct grammar. Very nice, Karen. <laughs> Evelyn. Remember the homework tomorrow, Evelyn. Thank you. Yeah. Ana Granados, yeah. go ahead. Hi, I would say the best thing about being single is that you have more money on your pocket. <laughs> All right, Ana, thank you very much. That is correct as well. Good grammar, good structure. Remember your homework for tomorrow. Who's next? Who's next? Bye. Dennis. Okay, Dennis, try again. Okay, yeah. One good thing of being married is that you enjoy, you have someone to enjoy your time and going out. Good. Only one vocabulary. Going out with. Remember, oh. that's it. So you enjoy somebody going out with. Good. Very good, Dennis. Excellent. Remember the homework for tomorrow, Dennis. Okay. Who's next? Who's Good next? Night. Good night, Dennis. Let me try. Okay, go ahead, Rafa. The best thing about Mary is that she is the team of 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 one. Okay, okay. So so only the grammar, Rafa. Only the grammar. Remember, the best thing about being married. Being married. Correct. Always the verb the best ing. The best thing about being married. Being married. Mm -hmm. Is that she is the team of one. Okay. All right. All right. That's it, right? Only one person. Thank you. Carlos Gonzalez, go for it. Uh, an advantage of being single is that you don't need permission to go out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you don't need permission. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Selena, you, you are next. Good. Remember the homework, Carlos. Good. Okay, I try. The best part of of being single is um is that I don't I don't have to worry about the gift. Good. Remember the best part know. of being being single. Being single. Excellent. The Good best time. part of being single. Thank you very much, Selena. Tomorrow, one minute presentation. Patricia, I see your hand. Go. I will try to, to, to say the, the best things that uh, being married is uh, to have some someone who hear me when my day was busy, like like today <laughs> very good patricia only one small mistake someone is singular someone not hear me someone hears someone hears me someone hears me correct always someone is singular he or she like this he hears me she hears me but very good the other grammar is correct thank you thank you patricia remember patricia one minute presentation tomorrow Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Patricia. All right. Nelson, go. I see your hand. Go ahead, Nelson. Okay, Nelson got scared. What happened, Nelson? Sorry, was double ah, okay. muted. Okay, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm not married. I was saying I'm not married. So from my part, the best part of being single. It will be that even though I can be financially responsible, I can be also financially responsible and have no one to actually provide explanations about it. Okay. All right. That is that is correct. Thank you very much, Nelson. Good grammar. Remember your presentation for tomorrow. Mm, we still have Javier, George, and Nicole. Um, can I? Okay, go ahead, Javier. The best, the best thing to be single is that you don't have to worry to Valentine's Day. Even Good. when you, even when your girl broke up with you, like 
five days ago. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No worries. <laughs> okay. Only the grammar is not correct, Javier. Good idea, but it's not correct grammar. Not to be. The best part of to, being. Of, of being. being single. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, you, Javier. Prepare your presentation for tomorrow. Nicole sure. or George? Okay, let me go ahead. Okay, for me, the best part of being single is that I can take more time to take care of myself. Yeah, you deserve it. Exactly. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Nicole. That is correct. I, I expect your one minute presentation tomorrow. Sure. Great. And George is the last person. George, everybody is waiting for you. <laughs> okay. One of the advantages of being married is that we spend time together, we make plans together, and we share, you know, everything uh, that we are that we are building as a as a home. So that's uh, what I would say. That, we, that is the best part of being married. Excellent, George. Thank you very much. That is correct. Please we prepare your 60 seconds, your one minute presentation for tomorrow. Thank you all for staying. I appreciate you coming and being on time and participating. Have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow. See you. Good evening. Bye. Good evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.